guitar practice session 10 20 24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give you a recap so you have an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions help to generate a routine, verbalize the things that I'm trying to learn to get them in my mind, provide information to others that are learning similar types of things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody has suggestions on how better to go about the things that I'm trying to learn here. I do think that presenting the information even if nobody's listening is useful because it helps to verbalize things in ways you might not otherwise do therefore if you want to make your own presentations use these resources such as the worksheet here don't worry about plagiarism we'll try to provide those to you uh, but how are they going to be formatted and a similar perspective from the position of us as being behind the guitar if we were to imprint the guitar strings on the screen we have the strings top to bottom, left to right, low string on top, as would be the position from your perspective from behind the guitar. I will also flip my guitar around so it looks like I'm left-handed so we can line up what I'm doing to what is on our screen here with regards to the worksheet and to yourself from the perspective of behind the guitar so we can focus on what we are doing, this time looking at the ninth. So we're looking at the, the major ninth and trying to really map out uh, where the major ninth was, no matter what starting point we were working on as the root note with the intention of what I'd like to do, the overall objective being, I would like to be able to play basically in any mode, whether that be the Ionian or major mode, the minor mode, and then the, the other modes, the Dorian, the Phrygian, and so on and so forth. In order, and then I would like to be able to play the one, three, five, and know where all those notes are, and then be able to add to that the seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen, and be able to know where all those are, so I have as much flexibility as I can. How can I do that? Most people start off learning. This is the process that I would think we would go through. We would say first, I learned the major scale because it's our Rosetta Stone. It's the thing that we compare everything else to oftentimes in Western music where we have the one through seven notes or relative positions out of the 12 possible notes in any key. Then we have the actual notes over here. And then we typically will, from a practical standpoint, try to memorize which of these relative positions we would make a major or minor chord from. First learning that the one, four, five are major, the two, three, and six are minor, the seven then is that Locrian or the diminished. That is great for playing in the major key, but difficult for playing in other keys where the relative position one through seven will change. Therefore, I'm trying to come up with a system where I can be playing in say the Dorian or the Phrygian or whatever. And still, although I adjust in my mind the notes to reorientate them uh, into the order, I can still compare them and tie them back to the major key so I still know what the relative 1, 4, 5, 2, 3, 6 is with regards to the related major key helping me to play either a major chord or minor chord. Beyond that, however, if I want to add the 7, 9, 11, and 13, I need to know more than whether it's just a major chord or a minor chord because these intervals will not tie in specifically to that convention. What I need to know more specifically, if I want to know the chord is in the same key, is the mode, the related mode. So when I go down here to the Mixolydian mode, for example, all the notes down here are actually a Mixolydian scale. So I could think of this as a Mixolydian scale, but I can also think of it as a Mixolydian chord which is how I would like to start thinking about it, at least internally, even if I can't really communicate that to others because other people might not be thinking about it in that, in that way or in that depth, right? That's why we, we often think of and talk about things as related to the major key and the minor key. But from a practical standpoint, it's useful to say, hey, look, I'm playing the fifth, which is the related Mixolydian, because that tells me not only the one, three, five, which would be the same as calling it a major chord, but also tells me that the distinctive one is the seventh. It has a minor seventh. In other words, if I want it to fit in the related Ionian mode that I'm playing in, and I want to add a seventh, 
I need to know that I'm adding a minor seventh in that case rather than a major seventh. If you don't do that, the problem is that we don't know like when I can use these more extravagant chords depending on what key I am playing in because I don't know whether it fits into that key or not. I might be able to kind of work it out by shape, which is also a great exercise, which I do as well. But it would be nice to be able to know by mode and be able to say, oh, what do I need here? Do I need a, a, a major, uh, like a nine or a minor nine or a, a major seven or a minor seven? So in our case, we're going to move on to uh, the nine and work on that. Now, it seems like there's a, there's a ton of ways to, to look at this on the fretboard. But if we think about any note on the fretboard as the root note, then we really only have uh, six strings that we have to memorize what the shape is with relation to that root note. So that's what we'll practice here. So if I'm saying I'm on this A, I could say on this string because there's only going to be one ninth on the between one and 12 frets, then I could just locate it and say that's where it always is. If I was on the string underneath it, that would be the same relative position, right? And then I can do that on this string, and then I can do it on this string, and this string, and this string, and this string, as it relates to that A, and all of the relative positions will be the same, no matter what note I go to, at least on this top string. And then I can do the same on the next string and look at the relative position of, in this case, it would be the E, right? This E, and then this E. And so that I can try to figure out those shapes. Now, as we figure out those shapes, I'll also try to, to build chords with it. Remember, in the chord construction usually is a one, three, five, and then we'd like to add whatever we could, like the nine. But if I can't grab the one, three, five, I will drop the five first, grab the one, three, and nine, still thinking of it as, in essence, a major chord with a nine in it, right? And then if I can't do that, I'll drop the third and try to grab the one, five, nine, if possible. So we'll practice that a little bit and, and grab whatever we can as we're reaching to this, to this extra note to see how we might see it from a practical standpoint as we're basically uh, playing chords. Now we also have to get into the idea that the 9, 11, and 13 will be, uh, are not in the key in terms of intervals, right? Because we have the intervals 1 through 7. Because we skip every other note when we talk about the intervals from a chord structure, we skip all the evens, and then we add the 9, 11, and 13, which are the evens, the 2, 4, and 6, which on a guitar, we can basically think of as equivalent to those even numbers, even though on a piano, they would you know, ideally be an octave up. But on a guitar, we're just going to kind of grab what we can grab for the most part, or at least that's where I'm at in my learning journey, right? If I'm trying to find the nine, I'm not getting too picky on the octave of it if, I, if I'm grabbing three other notes and I wanted to throw that in there. Now, just to note also the nine, I believe if we're looking at the major nine is the same for all of the modes. So that's the Ionian, the uh, Lydian, and the Mixolydian. So in this case, our normal convention of having a uh, the, the major and minor chords does basically hold, at least on the major chord side, for the nine. It will not hold for the minor chord side because not all the minors will have a minor nine in it. But at least on the majors, it's kind of nice to know that if I'm, if I'm looking at this, I'm always, whether I'm in Ionian uh, or, or Lydian or Mixolydian, that adding that shape on the nine, a major nine, which is a two note away major nine equivalent to a two note away uh, major second, uh, will always be the same shape. All right, and that's basically what, and then, I, and then I tell a joke in there. The joke is very political this time because we're getting to politics season. We're deep into it right now. So I try to do like a monologue type thing. So hopefully if, you, if that's gonna <laughs> upset you, then uh, skip that one. And then, uh, and then I just jam at the end with like some, uh, and just mess around basically in the key of A minor like normal. This time we're focused in on the nine, similar type of process in that we wanna be able to choose any note on the fretboard thinking of it as our root note and be able to find every related interval of a major nine as compared to that root note which of course is practical because it helps us to build more complex chords beyond the one, three, five, this time of course adding the nine to a chord. 
So a couple things to keep in mind when we think of chord constructions, we typically break it out in our mind as a major chord or a minor chord. We often learn the major scale and then we learn which of the notes on the major scale I can make into a major or minor chord by saying the one, four, five have a major chord construction, the two, three, and uh, six have a minor chord construction, and the seventh is that diminished chord with a flat five. The difference between a major chord and minor chord constructions is that the third, it's just the third, is either a major third, which is a four note away major third, or a three note away minor third. So if I was building an A major, then this third would be the only difference between the major and the minor. It would be a four note away as opposed to a, a three note away. So the thing that's interesting is that uh, if we go beyond that to the seven, nine, 11, and 13, then we sometimes run into problems because we cannot just break it down into a major seven, nine, 11, and 13 and a minor seven, nine, 11, and 13 because it doesn't neatly fit into those categories, which is why sometimes it's more useful to be thinking about the chords or as basically modal chords, meaning I'm playing a relative modal chord because the mode is what's gonna tell you all of the, the related notes as opposed to just saying it's major or minor. If I say, for example, the fifth is a major chord that I'm playing the, the major fifth, that will give me enough information to know the one, three, five, but not enough to add the seven because the seven is going to be is going to be a minor seventh as opposed to a major seventh normally when we name the chords we say whether it's going to be a a minor seven or a major seventh basically in the name of the chord and we could do a similar thing for the 9 11 and 13 but from a practical standpoint uh, if you're trying to play in the same key it would be useful to be able to say hey look i'm playing the related fifth mixolydian mode with a seventh in it right because that tells you all you need to know from a modal standpoint whereas if i name the the chord without that without the related mode you don't really know if all the notes in the chord are actually in the same key that you're playing in so in other words i could for example say that if i go to the this one and then i go to the five i have the e the the g sharp and the b I, I could go to the related mode uh, to that five and make and or and and make it the mode that I'm looking at the mixolydian mode, or I can think of it as going to the related major key. So if I went to the major key, for example, the key of E, and I'm saying I have that down here. I'm going to say all right. Now I'm just going to make it the one. So there's the one three five as though it's the one. Here's the one three five in the scale this way. And that's one way that we can think of it. But if I do that, then the seventh will be different because when I'm up here and looking at it in terms of the mixolydian, the, the seventh is, is the one that's going to be a distinct interval. So that's the thing that gets messy with these when we get past the one, three, five. We have to kind of think beyond, many times we have to think beyond the idea of just having a major chord and a minor chord. And we still want to think of the chords in a way that to ask whether they fit in the key that we're playing or don't fit in the key that we're playing. One way to do that is to think about the chords as modal chords. I'm playing a relative modal chord with these intervals in it. And the only way that will be useful to us is, of course, if we understand the intervals of the modes. And how can we learn that? We've been, I've been working on that a little bit where we would say that I would learn the intervals for the major and then the minor, and then we can compare the other two minors, Dorian and Phrygian, to the minor mode of Aeolian. There will only be one interval difference. So if I know the intervals of the major and the minor, then I can derive the intervals from the Dorian and Phrygian by comparing it to the minor and derive the intervals from the Lydian and Mixolydian, the two other major modes by comparing it to the major. That sounds quite complex. It does take a lot of time to get that down. But if you did that systematically, like we've been working on, like I've been working on at least, then then I think that's 
doable and that'll make it so this stuff is more practical. Okay, so now we're gonna be adding the nine. Now remember if I, I'm not gonna build the whole chord, I'm just gonna look for the interval so I know where the possible nines are available in relation to the root note. Now remember when I build a chord, however, I might touch on building a chord as we kind of do this as well then I would like to keep the one, three, five as the baseline of building the chord. So I'd still gonna be picking up the one, three, five, which are color coded here in the green, red, and yellow, and then pick up the nine. However, sometimes I can't pick up uh, all of those, but I want the nine. Well, then I would, the first thing I would do is say, well, if I have to drop one of these three, I'll drop the five, because the five doesn't really add a lot of flavor to the, to the note, the three is the thing that helps us determine if it's major or minor. And if I can't drop the five doesn't work to get the nine, then I would drop the third and keep the five if possible, right? And then, and, then, and then pick up the nine. So that's how you might think about building your chords. You don't really need all four notes in it. You could drop either the five or the third and still basically think of it as an A major with a nine in it, right? Although you've kind of, you've kind of altered it, but that's probably how you want to be visualizing it if you're in, you know, that key, right? And there's multiple different ways you can name chords, especially when you get to four notes in a chord, but you want to name it from the perspective that you're looking at it from, because that's the most practical perspective, at least when you're kind of improvising yourself. When you have to write it down for others, then you have to follow whatever conventions are best to write it down, <laughs> uh, you know, which and sometimes those two things are, are possibly different, right? So, so then when you're trying to think about how you might be doing it and why you're doing it and thinking about it that way. Okay, so given that, the other thing that's confusing is that notice what we have here, two, three, five, seven. I mean, one, three, five, seven is the same as one, three, five, uh, seven here, but then we go to the nine. Why do we go to the nine? because the nine is equivalent to the two. So notice we don't have any even numbers when I name my chord intervals because we skip every other one. If, if we were in a perfect world on one string like a, like a piano, then of course we could kind of say that's the nine because we're going an octave up. But on the guitar, it's like we, can't, we don't really have the luxury oftentimes of being able to pick the perfect interval that we want so we're just going to pick a nine wherever it is, which means the nine for all intensive purposes, intensive purposes is a two. So the nine is a two. So it's, so you could just think of it as a two. We, if I make that conversion in my mind, I know that we're looking at a two, which is a, is, is a, uh, and I have it on here, the nine, <laughs> the two is a two note away major second. That's all we're looking for in the nine, a two note away major second. The 11 is a four, right? The 11 would be equivalent to the four, which would be a five note away perfect fourth, and the 13th would be equivalent to the six. All right, given that, we're just gonna be going through this looking at the nine. So what I wanna do, I've made this latest worksheet with a major scale with the nines in it, which is just all the major keys. I'm not looking at related modes. I just made all of the ones that are not sharps and flats for the major so that I can pick a note somewhere in the middle of the guitar as my root note. And if I pick every string, all of the six strings, and look for all of the related nines compared to that string, then I should be able to move that same position anywhere on the fretboard because of the symmetry of the fretboard. So all we have to do then is to, to work out all the nines is to basically say, okay, let me pick a root note in somewhere in the middle of the guitar and see where all of the nines on each of the six strings is in relation to a note on each of the six strings. And that's all of the positions that are available and that is all movable across the whole fretboard. So we should be able to, to transpose that anywhere we want that's all that's as far as i can tell the easiest kind of way to get all of the intervals down and i'd like to learn it by shape but again if we can't learn it by shape we can use our counting of the intervals because it's a two note away major second as well as the inverse of that interval which is 12 minus two or 10 notes away to be able to count wherever we need to go on the fretboard as long as we know the distance between two strings is five notes except for the kink and the tuning down here where you got a four note uh, difference. Okay, so let's do it then.
We'll start with the A. So here we have an A, and then I'm just going to look at each string, and the, the current string I'm on has a two note away major second, which is equivalent to the nine, and that's going to be right here. So I can't play that at the same time, but I can arpeggiate it. So boom, boom. And obviously if I was playing a, a chord or something like that, I have the three up here. So here's one place to play the three. So I could arpeggiate one, three, and then here's the five down here. The five's down here. And then I can throw the two in, right? And there's the two. So one, th three, five, two, one, or one, two, three, five, one, two, three, five. And if you're reaching out there, notice I'm reaching, when I reach this far, that distance, I'm starting to do that with these two fingers instead of these two fingers, right? Because I'm reaching five frets out. Whereas if I was only reaching four frets out, I would reach with this finger. But if I'm reaching five frets out, I've been doing this because I just noticed that if I span my fingers five frets out, the one that's hovering over that middle note is kind of closer to here than, than the ring finger. So I think that's actually faster. And when I'm doing this shuffle pattern, this is more comfortable for me. I don't have mega giant hands, so that's what I do. So you can argue with me if anybody think, thinks that uh, there's a better way to do that. I would be interested on hearing the argument on what's the best way. Uh, so and anyway, so that's that. So then we could go to uh, the next one and say, what if I go to the next string down? Let's go to like a D. So let's just go to a D major down here. So here's D major. So here's the D. So now I'm going to go to the string above it and say, well, where's the two above it? And it's quite a distance over here. So now it's like, how would I find it if it's above it? Well, it should be a two note away major second is equivalent to the nine and 12 minus uh, two is 10. So the distance between this string and this string should be 10 and the inverse therefore is two. So I could count that up by saying, well, this would be what I would call like negative five between here to here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's a ten note away. So if I was able to play those at the same time, which might be doable if it wasn't the nut, that would be a ten note away uh, minor seven. And then bottom to top, two note away uh, major second or ninth a major ninth a two note away major ninth if you want to call it that and then we can say okay i could i can't really reach up to to that one so that's that and then if i was on the same string of course it would simply be up here so we have that same arpeggiating situation so if i wanted to arpeggiate that one i could go up to up here's the third at the ninth fret so i could go one two three five and the five is the power chord again right underneath so, do, do. so one, two, three, five, I could do that. One, two, three, five, one, two, three, five. All right. So if I go to, no, wait a second. Did I do all of this up top? I only did like one string. What did I do up here? Hold, let me, <laughs> I should have kept going. I went to this A and then I went to the arpeggio. Let's do the, I, let's keep on going up here. Sorry about that. The next string down on this one. Okay, where's the next string down on this one compared to the A? Well, it's gonna be a two note away. So if I said this was five, four, three, two. So, okay, so it's gonna be back here. So we're gonna say it's the B, da da. So if I went from top to bottom, two note away, major second or nine, or two note away, major nine. And if I went from the bottom to top, it would be 12 minus 2, uh, which would be a 10 note away, minor 7. Okay. Now, if I did that, I have like a third here. So I could like arpeggiate that third. So I could go... So 
that's the one, three, and then two or nine. Uh, so I could do that. And then I have like a fifth over here. So I could try, is it possible to get both of those? I could bar that off. So now I'm getting the one, the, the two, and then the five. I have an open finger here that I can't do too much with. So we'll leave it at that. Okay, uh, let's do the next string. The next string is going to be down here. So where would it be on the next string? Will it be 5, 10, and then 10, 11, 12? There's the octave. So I could go back to one right or zero right there and then one, two. So I, so I can say, okay, that makes sense. So now I'm like at the nine. So top to bottom would be a, uh, a two note away major second or a two note away major nine, however you want to call it. And then bottom to top would be uh, 12 minus two or 10 note away minor seven. So if I go there, what do I have in between? I've got this nicely, it's easy to finger this fifth right there. So I could easily do that and I get a chord that has the one, five, two or nine, one, five, two or nine. So that's pretty easy to play. Okay. Interesting. I'd like to get the third in there. It's not really practical to get the third. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Right, not that way at least. All right, let's go, let's go then to the next note down, like here. So now I'd say on the next string it would be five, 10, 15, uh, and then 15 minus 12 would, would get us back down to in our range. So 15 minus 12 is five minus two, which is three, and then two. So there, so that makes sense. So it's gonna be right here. That's the shape we might think of most. Well, not really most, but. So that's gonna be a two note away, major second, inverse. 10, 10 note away, minor seven. Okay, what do I have that I, I could play it this way. Like that. Because now I can pick up that third that way if I wanted to, just to play the thir the three, the one, three, and then just the nine, or two. And then I could pick up even, well, the third, the, the third uh, is going to be a ways down there. be tough to pick up the third like that. I could bar this, which means I would be picking up that 13. So if I barred that, picking up the 13, and then I could put my finger down here and get that three in there. That's interesting. Is that right? Now it would be this finger. That's interesting. So I'm trying to get this third right there, that E right there. It's an interesting voicing to do that. Okay. Okay, let's see what else we have. The next one down is way back. So five, 10, 15, and I can drop it down 15 minus uh, 12 is five minus two or three, and then three plus five up here because of the kink and tuning, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, which would be way back here. Not really practical. 
could almost reach it. If it wasn't open, it's open, so I don't have to reach it. But if I had to, it would be difficult. So let's just move on. And then the last one is down here, same position on the bottom string as the top string. So one note array, or two notes from here, therefore down here, looks like that. All right, now let's move on to the next one. Let's do this properly. Uh, I was on the D this time. Let's do the D, oh. There's a spider just crawled across, anyway. Let's do my joke. I've got a long joke this time. <clears throat> so it's political. So uh, if so, if you're going to get, if anyone gets offended with the political, you should toot, fast forward, plug your ears. Uh, this, is, this is like a gut-filled rant. I tried to do a great gut-filled rant on this one. I didn't call it a rant. It's a, it's a monologue. It's a gut-filled monologue. Okay, here we go. Honestly, let's be real. The current administration is a joke at this point. Simply addressing the elephant in the room is not enough at this time. You know, what we need to do is we need, we need, to, we need to yank the elephant's tail and take its peanuts. Not just to dress it, possibly bribing it with like chocolate chip ice cream until it leaves the room for crying out loud. I mean, if we try to be nice, just asking to simply address the elephant in the room, those deconstructivist, word-manipulating sons of a bee gaggle are, are just going to put address on the elephant. You know that's what they're going to do. What do you mean? We address the problem. We put, we put address on the elephant, and it's, and it's, and it, and it's, it's just... It's just go about their business. Then they'll just go about their business just like they normally would, spending money with their corrupt bureaucrat bureaucracy increasing and so on and so forth. I mean, look, putting a dress on the problem is not what we meant when we said we wanted to address the problem, okay? And you know it. You know it at this point. This is ridiculous. I'm getting, I'm getting sick of these games, dang it. That would be like, that would be like SpaceX trying to launch a rocket into space and they say, let's do it. And then all the engineers start humping the rocket ship for crying out loud, like a, like a dog humping your leg. That's not what we meant, dang it. I, 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 could get, I could excuse like a stupid dog for, for the miscommunication of humping someone's leg, but although I'm still gonna smack it, right? Oh, you're cruel, you smack, it's like, no. That's not cruel to smack the dog. If you, don't, if you don't smack the dog when it's humping someone's leg, you're doing it wrong. And it's not like a cruel smack, you know, from a place of anger. Uh, it's, it's, just a, it's just a clear, crisp communication smack. That's what I'm talking about. But honestly, there's, there's no excuse when, when, the people, when the people tell the government. The people tell the government, get it done for, for the government to act like they're as stupid as a dog. Right, because they, they, they're not that dumb. The dog had, the dog is, you know, stupi stupidity is not the problem here, okay? Deception and lies, those are the problem. And those problems are inexcusable when you're a government public servant or department where your primary task is extremely high levels of transparency designed specifically to build trust given the fact that you're given you know this power and shit i'd like i i'd say i you know what i'd say i'd say try you could try slapping joe biden but but i'm i'm pretty sure you're just going to get that same blank stare after you slap him right there's not going to crisp clear communication is just not possible with that guy at this point you know what i mean and then after and then you'll probably get sued for attacking a helpless old old invalid man Probably at the same time as they as they're as they're busy releasing the the whoever the latest Trump shooter is, while they pat him on the head, letting them know they'll they'll do their best to disarm the public, so that in in the future his attempts will be more successful possibly, and it's like hold on now, I w I was just trying to wake up the old man 
from his brain dead trance he's been in for the last four years for crying out loud. And how, and the, how in the world can it be at the same time? They're telling me at the same time, number one, this guy's a helpless old man. And, and at the same time, number two, he's the current and active mightiest governing politician in the, in the biggest country in the world, battling it out with ruthless autocrats, you know, dictators and despots for crying out loud. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all for pro providing first class, all expenses paid support to this guy and, and kind, loving support to anyone that needs help. But we need to realize in this country that promoting somebody to a stitch to a station, they're not even close to being prepared to handle is not kindness. That's not kindness. It's cruelty. Not only to the person elevated, but to all those influenced by that person's incompetent decisions. And that second group of people is much larger than the first and where our compassion would most profitably be focused. Period. Sorry, that's what they say at the gut. So I sounded, that, was my rant, that was my epilogue, so I had to do the period thing because that's what they do on the show. Okay, moving on. Okay, so we were on this one. I think I did this one. I'm on the string below it. So similar, similar, obviously uh, related positions here. So we're going to say that is going to be a two note away. So it would be a, a five, four, three, two. So that makes sense. It's on the second. So ba boom. So that's going to be a two note away major second which we can also call a nine, uh, a major ninth, a two note away major ninth. Inverse is 10 minus two, which is going to be uh, a 10 note, a uh, 12 minus two, which is gonna be a 10 note away minor seven. Okay, what can I do with that? Well, I do have a fifth above it here, so I could reach this way. And so if I do that, then I've got a, a five, a five up top, a five, one, nine. Almost sounds like the Superman song. I could arpeggiate between here. So now I've got, and then put it, and then lifting this finger up to here. Okay, so I have that. Is there anything else I can do here? I've got a, if I did this, this, I've got a third up here. That would be cool. If I can, I have a fifth out here, actually. That might be the easiest. Although distance wise, it's further than I thought. It'd be easier if it was higher up. Well, I can't do that though. No, what are you thinking? What you talking about? We're going to put down here is a third, so that's even harder to reach. I can't even talk while trying to reach that. Yeah, that's not very practical. Uh, okay. We have a fifth down here. So I could pick this one up at the bottom. Okay, anyway, what else we got? K Moss TNA Aki Awara. Let's say we go to the next string. It would be 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14. Well, I could say 5, 10, 11, 12. That goes back to zero because that's the octave. 1, 2. So it's at the 9. So boom from here to the nine, that's doable. So that's a two note away uh, major second or a nine note away major second. And the inverse would be a 10 note away minor seven. You could have called it a two, the, okay. And then I have in between there, there's my fifth again. 
So that's a pretty doable shape to add the fifth in on that. Boom, boom, boom. Could I add the, now I have, because of the kink in the tuning, where on the second string I have available to me a third, which is pretty easy to reach. I'm muting that string. I could also, of course, grab another root. And I could bar off the G, which is an 11. So now I'm barring off this G. That would give me an 11. All right, cool. Muy interessante like an elefante. All right. <laughs> Oh, God, what is wrong with you? I have, don't know what you're talking about. I'm gonna, f let's go to this G. We're gonna go above it to a nine. So again, if I go to the one above it on this G, we say that we're gonna go, we have to go, it's the inverse to, so it would be a two, we're, a, a nine, a nine <laughs> is a two note away major second, which has an inverse of 10 minus two or 12 minus two, which is a 10 note away minor seven. So if I count that up, it would be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it would be way back here, tough to reach, but it's an open string. All right, so there's that. And then if I go to the one above it, now I have another string above it. So I'm looking for 10 notes away is right there. That makes sense because now I can start to really see the 10 note away minor seven, which I know that shape fairly well is usually like this, unless there's a kink in the tuning. So now I'm like, yeah, that's a 10 note away from A to G. That's a 10 note away minor seven. And from G to A, that means that's a two note away major second, which can also be named a two note away major ninth. Okay. And then of course, with that one, I have, I can add the D in the middle there. And so now I've got the, the one, the five and the nine. So that's cool. I have a, uh, <clears throat> what else I sh you would think I should be able to grab something else here. Wouldn't I, wouldn't you think I would think so I could grab like these two. And that fifth, just another way to grab the fifth, a higher fifth. It's a different sound. I'm muting that string, but I don't have to mute it. I could bar it. Or I can mute it. All right, I have an, another third down here. I have a third back here. That would be cool. That's a way to do it. So I can go like that. That's not bad, that's useful. I can mute the strings below it with this finger. I have an added finger down here so I could grab that E below it and just mute the, la mute the, or mute the last A with my palm. Or I can ring out that because it's an E. But so I'm muting the second, the A string. That's kind of cool. That's totally doable. So if I'm playing like down here, I could be like, there's my G shape. It'd be from this shape. Okay, now, 
Don't start singing Pink Floyd. You're going to trip me out, man. Don't start with the Pink Floyd. Okay. Oh, God. Having flashbacks. Okay. Let it go. Let it go. We're going to have to go. Let's see. Now we have a two note away. <laughs> right there. So we can arpeggio. And then I have the fifth... So we have the, the fifth underneath it. So here's the one where, of course, we have the one, two, th three, five. One, two, three, five. Okay. And then I could also do it this way. One, three, five. One, three, two. Picking up this three down here. Uh, all right. Moe B to the N. B N. B N, baby. All right. So then if we go down below, we've got, we got a five, four, three, two. Two note away. So two note away, uh, major second, or two note away, major nine. It. I want to keep on saying that to get the fact that the major nine is a two note away, major nine equivalent to the second. And then if I invert it, it's going to be a ten note away, uh, minor seven. All right. So if I do that, I have a five above it. So I could grab that five above it. So I've got the five one and major nine. Sounds like Superman. Superman. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. And then I could go here. Oh, let's do it. Alright. And then uh I have another here. I've got the three is right here. Whatever. What do we got? What else we got? The next one would be 5, 10, and then 15 up here because of the kink of the tuning. Dropping it down. Uh, 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2, 3. And then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Something went horribly wrong. 5, 10... 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19, I'm on the wrong note, idiot, okay, let it go, I'm still tripping from the Pink Floyd thing, dang it, let's go, this is going to be 5, 10, and then 5, 10, 11, 12, so that brings me back to 0, and then 2. All right, that makes sense. So I could be up here on the 10. It's a bit of more of a stretch because we have now crossed the fault line. I still have my D right there, so I can grab that. Will we B to the N? So that's a good way to grab the nine. Much I can do with my finger, my floating finger here. I could put it at the bottom, but that's not gonna help too much. All right, let's keep it at that. What else we got? Moving on. Let's not get stuck in the mire. We've got five, ten, and then fifteen. Fifteen minus twelve is five. Minus two is three, and then two. So we got from here to here. So top to bottom, two note away, major second, or a two note away, major nine. And I have, this way I could do this and grab this one with my pinky maybe. This one down here. So I could do that. 
because then I get the fifth right that way or and I could play this I could just bar this whole thing which means I would get the C which is the 11 and then the E which is the 13 so I could just bar this and be like bar it whatever dude but then no I'm gonna pick up the fifth is the D so I only pick so then I pick up the D and then I pick up this E which is the 13 Let's move it on down to the C underneath that one. Up C, so C, C major. All right, so if I went here and I went above it, we're gonna say, okay, two note away. So we're looking for the ninth, which is equivalent to a two note away major second. Has an inverse of 12 minus two, which is 10. So I need to find a distance of 10 from this C. So it'd be negative five, six, uh, and that's not it. It'd be back here. Negative five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which of course is difficult to reach, but it would be way out there. So I know where it's at. Okay. And then the next one up is probably the one I should know best that's above it because that's the shape I know pretty well as if I was going from top to bottom a 10 note away minor 7 because it'd be 5 10 5 10 and so therefore the inverse is a 2 note away major second otherwise known as a 2 note away major 9 so if I went from top to bottom whoa dude dude wait that's not right right there we go top to bottom would be a 10 note away major a 10 note away minor 7, bottom to top. 2 note away major 2nd, otherwise known as a 2 note away major 9. And then, and then if I had those two down, I could always put the one in the middle and be like, now I've got the 1, 5, and 9. One, five, nine. Mui B to the N, B to the N, N. I have a three back here, but then I lose the root. You can't lose the root, dude. No, that's not the root. The root's down here. I should have a different color for the root. It's green. The root is green. <sighs> Whatever. I still feel like, okay. I have these three. <laughs> So now I've got the one three going from bottom to top. One three major nine. One three nine. That's cool. That's wait a sec. That's not right. It's back here. A little bit more of a stretch. Okay. Still doable. All right. What else we got? We've got one up here. So that would be five, I'm looking for two distance of two. So five, five, 10, 15, 14, 13, 11, 12, 10. Right, that makes sense. It's 10 notes away because the inverse is two. Okay, and that would be at 10, bit of a reach. And I've got in between there, I've got a G underneath it. I'm not going to be able to reach that. My fingers are hovering somewhere over here. You'd think maybe that E would be doable. I can do that. Just mute everything else. I can mute this one. be able to get the E under this. Anyway, it's a bit of a stretch. More than a bit. A bit? A bit? Okay, I could do it though. It's not out of like, and then there's the one right here on this string. Two note away major second 
or nine note, two note away, major nine, which we can arpeggiate up to here. Da -da. So one, one, two, three, and then the five is up here now. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, five. Or I have the third underneath it. So I could be like, abandon that third and go down here. So now I've got like, one, two, three, five, one, two, one, two, three, five, one, two, three, five. Yeah, that's what we got. Underneath it, I have a two back here which would be five up to here because of the kink in the tooting. Four, three, two. So my being, how you being? So that makes sense. So top to bottom, two note away uh, major second or two note away major nine, bottom to top is 12 minus two or 10 note away, 10 note away minor seven. And then if I do that, I have a fifth below it here so I could like bar that off and go one nine and then uh, five I also have a fifth above it on this side which is muy interessante so I could go on this side right above it That's the Superman soundy one. And then I could go to this one. This gives you kind of that mysterious sound on the top of it. This one. Reaching. That's part of a reach. Probably could do it. It's open though, so. Whoa. Something ain't right with that. You messed it up, bro. That would be a reach because of the kink in the tune in here. Push that one back, I think. And then we can go up to this one. Bro, this is going to be 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. So up to, what, 13 minus 12 would be 2. Or 13 minus 12 would be 3 minus 2. Something wrong with that. Wait a second. It would be... 5, 10, 11, 12, these two cancel, and then 2. Okay, that makes sense. So up to that 10, that's a reach because of the kink in the tuning. But I have that G in the middle, so I could do it. And I can grab that G. Give you a little bit of a tensiony sound. All right. What else we got? Let's go to this E then. E down here. Okay, there's our E. So if I go above it, I've got, uh, I'm up here now. It's too far out. The, the above it one is the one that's just out of reach on the 11. But I can count that out and see where it would be. It would be negative 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then 1, 2. Does that make sense? I guess. Uh, negative, it go, wait a sec. No, it would be go negative 5 here because of the kink in the tuning. 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, I've gone brain dead. Hold on a second. Okay, I went brain dead there. I slapped myself, and my fa and my face finally. I I was looking like Joe Biden. I was like, uh, but then, luckily, I snapped out of it. I'm that's gonna happen to me one day, so I'm not gonna snap out of it, and I'm just gonna be like, it's not gonna work anymore. But let's see. So what happened here? It's gonna be, this be negative five four, three, two, one, zero. 
and then it goes around the horn again, 12, 10. So that's why it makes sense. Okay, so then, but I can't reach it anyways, is the point. All right, so then I can go up to this one and say, all right, so that's going to be, so, so I'm going up. So I look at the inverse. So I'm looking for a two note away uh, major second, which is the same as a two note away major nine. Inverse 12 minus two is 10. Kink in the tuning means I go back here to go to the negative five, negative 10. So now I have this shape, which look, so if I go from the top to the bottom, this is a 10 note away minor seven, which looks different because this has been shifted up, up because of the kink in the tuning. So this is a 10 note away, minor seven. The inverse therefore is a two note away, uh, major second, otherwise known as a nine note away, major second. All right, and then if I did that, I could pick up this one along with it, which means I can pick up that fifth pretty easily. That would be sencillo, bottom to top, one, five, nine. Okay. And then I could pick up the one up top like that. I could pick up the third way up here, which would be kind of a weird way to play this because now I got the root on the bottom and then the five the nine and then the third is that right one two three yeah i could just bar the whole thing off and then i would pick up the 13 with it so now i pick up the one five nine thirteen three right. okay okay i see what's happening and it's not bad. So now I'm gonna say over here is gonna be 5, 10, 15, 14, 13, 11, 10. Wait a second. Negative 5, 10, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. You skipped a number. Counting backwards is hard, okay? You can't just... So that makes sense. So that's a 10 note away. 10 note away. Uh, minor 7, inverse. 2 note away, major 2nd, otherwise known as a 2 note away, major 9. And I could... I have an open finger here that I could lay on down. Could I reach that 3rd? It's not really convenient. Uh... Well, no, uh, it's right there. That's pretty hard. Oh, that is, I don't think that is a practical thing to do because of the kink in the tuning down there. So I will not do that. My wrist is feeling better, but it ain't feeling that good to tweak it around like that. So this is gonna be five, 10, 15, so that I can bring it down 15 minus 12 is five minus two or three. And then three plus five is eight, nine, 10. Makes perfect sense. 10 note away from top to bottom, 10 notes between those two from here to here. So bottom to top would be a two note away major second, top to bottom. Note away minor seven, bottom to top again it could also be called a two note away major nine. Now I have a five and a one right under this one, and another three over there, so I could just play like that whole thing barred off. And then I'm probably picking up that A, which is an eleven as well. I have a I could just pick up that fifth right there doing that so it could be like boom fifth and then now wait a second uh oh i'm up on this one i grabbed the wrong and then this 
right there. That is certainly doable. Could I, I could grab maybe the whole little, that's not going to happen. Uh, it's possible. So I play my little D shape here, and I grab the D, this on top. The two or nine on top. That's weird. More likely, I would grab it right here. Anyway. All right. Muy interessante. We have another one up here, of course. On the same string. Boom, boom. And I could arpeggiate it thusly. Two ways I can do it. I can go up here. There's the three and there's the five. One, two, three, five. One, two, two. One, two, three, five. Or I can pick the three down here and say. Hermosa. And then I have, uh, lastly, one down here. That's not even right. I'm getting tired. I think I have to stop. You have one more string. You're going to quit on the last string. I'm tired. I don't feel like doing it. I'm just going to mess around here for a second. What was it? I was doing this like shuffle pattern from here, reaching up to here, but I was trying to do that with all like down. Because I could do that then here with the D, So now I'm going down, and then reach here up, and then reach here down, and then up, and then down, and then here. And I can even do it like anywhere, because I could do it here on this A, reaching up to this, E, up to here. So, and I don't care if I'm ringing stuff out because I'm in the key of A minor or C major. And then I could do it down here, but then instead of it being right here, I gotta pick this string. I could do it up here. And then the A, there's another A right here. So I can do it all over the place. I can even do it like in here. But see, I, here I have to reach up to there. Down. chord. <laughs> 